to the group. So I haven't heard back from him, but uh, hopefully in July we'll, we'll get things moving. Okay. I'm getting a little anxious. Mm. Okay. Uh, not necessarily about what's going to happen or how we do it, but I want to just make sure that we have enough time to educate our communities as to what choices we're making. Right. So um, if there's anything we, I can do to help stay on course, So by policy, you have a policy about accepting non-resident students, and um, you do have a request from uh, the Lucys, who have a daughter. She was tuition here two years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, was homeschooled this past year, and would like to come back to uh, Jackson Grammar School. And if it's approved, uh, there would be the payment of the $10,000 as a tuition student, and Principal Demosti is in favor of this. What grade 
grade have you been going to? Four. She's in fourth grade. She was here, um, she moved, tuition didn't hear half of first grade, all of second grade, and then was homeschooled last year. Yes. So to return, I think if she hadn't been a previous student already connected to our group, I'd think a little differently about that. But yeah, yeah. But I vote in favor. So we need a motion for that. Motion. Okay, we we'll make a motion. Second. Did uh, yes. yeah. Now you can discuss. Sorry. Maggie. No, I think having Maggie back would be great. Yeah, yeah, they're a really lovely family. Okay. All questions and discussion good. Yes, 
yes and Jen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, budgeting for paraprofessional 50% position. Yeah, that was just a, an update at the last board meeting. Um, you folks created a 50% position, which wasn't budgeted. So Gail did some of her homework. Maybe you can just kind of, where are you finding the money for? Rob, do we have to overturn for this? <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Well, I used uh, step six on the non-contracted uh, staff schedule to calculate that 15 hours a week at step six would be about $9,436. If the person elects a health plan, this is just an estimate, it could be higher if it's a family or less if it's a one person, but a two person plan is $6,450 next year. Unemployment, FICA, and related costs, I estimated at about $600. And then there's a debit card we give all of our employees with um, health insurance, and that's about $1,500. So I estimate that the cost of that would be $17,986.02. Um, to offset that amount, we um, are not hiring as or have as many financial obligations to ESY this year, so I took $1,000 from that line. Summer program didn't happen, it was $9,200 in that line. Um, the spike and related benefits associated with both of those things that I estimated at $700 and summer supplies at 300. So I know we have at least $11,200 that are unencumbered and available to be spent leaving about 6,700 to be found um, that I'll work with the SAU and grant monies and, and filling the gap as we go through the year after we see what is uh, being expended at more. Yeah, time. once once you hire somebody you'll have exact right it could be they could be less than so they may not even have to find any of the money. Thanks. That's great. Thank you, Gail. That's awesome. You're welcome. Okay. So all those uh, in favor we didn't have no, that was more of an FYI, just to report out from, from you. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Right, Kevin, do you have anything you'd like to share with No, just uh, we had a you know great graduation at Kenna High School for the kids. A lot of nice end of the year pieces. Um, you know, it's been a long, hard year for everybody. Uh, last year at this time, we were really working on bringing kids back to school and the planning process throughout the summer. Now this year we're we're in process of redeveloping a, a similar plan. And right now, what we're looking at is kind of a, a red, yellow, green scenario. So if we're in red conditions, which would be part of um, you know community spread, what's happening, vaccination rates, all of those things, that would be the most restrictive. Which is pretty much what we live through the year, most of the majority of the year. Yellow is similar to where we are right now, the conditions in the community. Um, you know, we're outdoors a whole lot more, so we can relieve some of those uh, mask restrictions and some of those other pieces. And then green, depending upon where things go, even basically no restrictions going back to where we are. Right now, it's, it's really premature to say, this is what it will be at the end of August or September. But with those indicators, um, we just need a little bit of time, probably a couple of weeks, before we bring the, the community back in, in folks, the, the medical doctors and, and uh, in that, that reentry team or the pandemic response team. I have to tell you, our nurses have done just a tremendous job this year. It's been incredible, along with everybody else, the bus drivers, the, the support staff, the custodians, maintenance folks, administrators, all the way through. It's just been, uh, it, it's been a long year, but people really dug in and uh, they did a nice job. So, no, that, that's really where we are right now. And like I said, it was, it was nice to end on a real high note with uh, graduation. The weather's been super cooperative for all the end of the year activities, which is, it's been good. We had a few hot days, but uh, other than that, we're, we're just moving forward. Can I ask Kevin, are you, oh, sorry, Jen. Um, is the planning moving forward different for elementary level versus middle and high school based on vaccination eligibility at yes. the moment? Yeah, 
And even right now, uh, Kate, it, it, you know, the, the doctor, we do meet every, every Tuesday morning, and Pam's part of that as well. And there, they, there, were, there were concerns about the pre-K to sixth grade students, and it, even tighter than that is pre-K to three, four to six, and what those conditions are. The difficulty is the more that you change within a building, the more confusing it is for kids, as, as you folks know. So, um, but seven through twelve is is a little bit easier to to manage some of those things, and then the vaccination rate, right? So you have more students vaccinated nine through twelve, all the staff work. So yes, it will be dependent upon uh, developmentally where where students are at as well. Um, I would like to make a comment on your letter that was sent home to staff on the last day, having you know been in their shoes, the staff's shoes. Uh, that letter was great. It was upbeat. I'm going to go back and read it again because all that music at the end. You have to play the music. I know, I know. I've been a little pressed, pressed for time, but I, I really, you know, you know, applaud your, you know, your upbeat feeling and you know what you convey to the staff. And if I were them, I would have appreciated that. So hopefully they did as well. Okay. Uh, thanks. You're welcome. Kevin, I just wanted to thank you and, and everybody for everything you guys did this past year. Is it above and beyond the past 18 months that we've gone through all this? And yeah, it's just unbelievable. And, and now that we've graduated and we're reuniting with other friends and stuff and to hear their stories, we are so fortunate to have you guys um, No, absolutely. It was, it was, like I said, it was everybody. It was school board members, it was community members donating things, and it just, it was excellent. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to do it again, but, you know, let me know if we do. All right, so thank you very much. Gail, do you have anything else? I do have a couple of things. I know um, the board had been asking for a report from Victoria, and um, I actually have one today. I give you one to pass on to give you these. I'll turn this in. Oh, I've got mine. Mine's going. Okay. Um, so basically, Jen, since you don't have it, it will be in the packet, but um, she talked a little bit about what she was able to do remotely from our school not being able to go to the high school or to the middle school because of um, the COVID kind of hampered what the plans were originally, but she did contact all of the families several times during the year, had individual meetings with middle and high school students that had issues or called her and asked for her support. Um, she participated and worked with this staff and the high school students regarding the Jump Start program, consulted with the guidance staff on a regular basis, um, participated in the weekly family liaison meetings, SAE-wide, so had an opportunity to work with the other professionals around the district, um, and created a web page with resources of opportunities for older students. Um, held evening office hours on Wednesday nights where uh, high school age students could contact her, um, and is available during the summer or any contact. So and then she talks a little bit, I'll let you read the whole report, but talks a little bit about the goals that she would like to put in place for next year to further enhance that role with the older kiddos. Yeah, can you email me that report if you get a chance? Sure. I won't go until the 30th, so <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. That's okay. While we're, while we're signing out. And then I, I would also like to alert you to um, the promotion we had here was very well received and nicely done. It was face-to-face, -face, although it was limited to the families, members of the graduates, and then the staff held kind of a high-five receiving line, followed by a parade where the kiddos got into their decorated cars and um, drove out. I wanted to thank our PTO, Nora Duflo, and um, Katie Yearden, who chair our PTO. They um, 
worked with the other parents in the district to make signs to be sure that every student had at least two signs somewhere out there along the roadside for them. Um, I also wanted to um, shout out to Mike Dufalo, John Marshall, and uh, Victoria Hill, who put together a really cool series of field trips that I think I mentioned to you that on Monday, uh, every sixth grader got to the top of Mount Willard and back, even, even some who aren't inclined to be outdoorsy, made it all the way to the top. Um, and on Wednesday, they were swimming in the Saco and canoeing. They had a fabulous trip then. So then the thought next Friday, they got on a bus and went over to the Saco, um, where it goes out and onto Ferry Beach, and they all went out for seafood dinner at the end. So they had a really long, long day to spend um, together for their, their end to uh, the year. So even though they sort of lost the ecology school trip, they gained a new trip, and, and Mike Duflo especially was our educator, and he was just fabulous with so it was a really great, great opportunity for them. Um, so thanks to all of them. Yeah, and I had asked for Victoria's report, and I'm really happy to like just hear how she was able to creatively engage with all of the older students. Um, and I'm really excited about what she can do next year. But if there were any year that we were going to design a position that she landed in grammar school every <laughs> single day, I know that I am incredibly grateful that that was this year. So um, I think. It'll be hard to see her kind of branch out into the community, but it was a real kind of treasure to have her yes. planted at the grammar school every day this year. It was huge. It so. would be a bit of an adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I think that was a good. That was good. Awesome. Gail, I'm really happy things worked out. Yeah. Well, did I lose you guys again? No, no we're we're listening. Okay. Especially if you're working close together, 
uh, closer together. If you're outdoors, it's going to be more flexibility for that, especially with the heat and those conditions. Thank you. Does that work for you, Darlene? It does. Uh, I'll give the feedback. Okay, so we'll bring that back. And then Ann then asked as well, so I just want to make sure we're all not giving, you know, sort of tell her to come back to you and ask. Sure, absolutely. Who is, what is her name? Ann Bennett. She's a wonderful person. She's a legend in town. <laughs> And she's with the group that's coming this weekend, so I think that's why she's anxious to go to see Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. She'll do whatever we say. There's no issue. Yeah. She goes up to make sure she's doing the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Send her my email. It's fine. Okay, great. Thank All my you. phone call. Phone's fine. done this in the past if we have to hire over the course between now and August 16th what I will do is I will prepare a, a you know a, a packet with a recommendation I will poll you electronically and then you folks vote and then it'll be confirmed at the following meeting so if you have any question about any candidate that we move forward you know give me a call we can talk about that but if we get a, a decent candidate for, you know, for uh, world, world language, paraprofessional, yeah. We, we don't want to lose them because we, the time is next, so. Yeah, we've done that before, so yeah. that, that's fine. And um, this is my only occasion, so I'll be honest. <laughs> what are the hours for the, the part-time para? Um, we were a little bit flexible, but um, it's three hours or so a day. Okay. Yeah. Depends on the candidate. You get a good candidate, the more yeah. flexible. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'd like to just know this for networking. Central. <laughs> and the earlier the better, because we haven't really set a like schedule yet, so okay. we can work around it now. Later yeah. there will be a more of a set. Seconds to, to clear out. 